for being here. Today, I try to talk to you about many ways to be a Python contributor, or my, the, my way, the way I found it to be a better Python contributor. So it's related to my experience. So before going ahead, I present a bit myself. And I'm Paolo Mecchiore, I'm a member of the Python Software Foundation, the Django Software Foundation, and the Python Italia Association. I co-organize PyCon it Italia, a conference in Italy, it will, next year will be in Bologna. And I founded the last year a local meetup, Python Pescara. I'm more in the Python uh, ecosystem, a contributor to the Django project, and I am coach organizer of Django Girls. And I'm also a CTO for 20Tab. Uh, the first thing I, f I found in my career about being a Python contributor was thinking about writing code is the most obvious one, and but for what I discovered after that is not the only one. In this picture, I'm in my first ever uh, Python-related uh, conference was the Plon Conference in Naples in 2007. And that time, after the university, the only things I, I thought about contributing back was writing code, but I was a newcomer and I was afraid to don't be able to contribute in the, in the code base. But it was a starting point to see that a lot of people did so different things. So the second things I did f to be a Python contributor was joining the community and being part of uh, uh, what was where going on in the community. And in this picture I was with um, some of the Zoop uh, and Plone uh, people at, in Florence in EuroPython 2011, my first ever EuroPython. And the education was um, a great way for me to be connected also with the Python community in general. For example, I, I attended my first uh, Django-related uh, talks and it was a very good way to start with this technology and I'm still using it. Another um, step I did in my career to be a better Python contributor was starting getting involved. And it not often at the, at the beginning because I was afraid I was not able to give something back. But in this occasion, I was on my first DjangoCon Europe in 2017, and I found out that a lot of people uh, younger than me or newcomers were volunteering in that conference, uh, tried to give a talk there, and some things which off on me, and I decided to be more involved in the community. And so I started directly that year. The first thing I did was joining a sprint. Uh, in this picture, I'm in the sprints, the Django sprints in 2017 with two core contributors of the Django, Marcus and Mark, and was a very good way to go uh, far from my comfort zone and start talking with very experienced uh, core developer uh, it's very great how you can find the core developer of your technology you use every day in conference like that. It's impossible to do the same in your company. Also, if you are working in, I don't know, a very big corporates, in that type of conference, you find many of, con of core contributors of the technology you use, and if you talk with them, they are very open to give suggestions to you or criticize your work, which is the best way to, to improve. So in that day, I proposed a, a new feature to Django, and they helped me to understand how I was working, the triage, triage part of the issues, uh, how to create a pull request. And I discovered that the code I was able to contribute in, in Django was a lot, but a bit different from what I did every day in my daily job. So, the next things I, I did after the sprintings, after learning about how to contribute back, was actually contributing in the Django on Django code. And I discovered that something I used my daily job was a, a crypto extension with Django and Postgres was something useful for all the other people in, in the Django ecosystem. And so I created the pull request, I followed all the steps 
And uh, after weeks of um, reviews and correction, I was able to join, uh, they merged my first big feature in Django 2.0, and was, that was a very good moment for me, like a developer, I understood that I was able to contribute something to others, and this step gave me the confidence to continue to contribute uh, to the project and also other projects, so it was a very good way to be a contributor. But another thing I found very useful to improve as a developer and also a contributor was speaking at a conference. And in the same version of Django I said before, to the 2.0, I found a new feature that was the full text search and I used them in a project as a job and I decided to speak about the technology, not the project itself, but the technology. And this is the first selfie when I started taking selfie in conferences in 2017. It's in the PyCon Italia conference, my uh, preferred conference. Now I'm part of it and this is the t-shirt of this year. And from that moment I found out that um, working on your slide for your talks force yourself to clarify some tools about the technology you want to speak about. And after giving the talk, I was way more prepared on the topic than uh, only solving a problem in, in my daily job. Uh, after that, I used a lot of what I discovered studying for the slides in, in, the, in the next project. So it was very, very useful. Another thing I found attending the conferences in the DjangoCon and uh, EuroPython was a new things, I never heard about it, uh, was uh, the Django Girls uh, program. So I decided to coach in that, uh, that workshop. And this is a picture of me coaching for the first time in, in Django Girls in 2017 in Rimini. And there was the EuroPython in Rimini and it was full of girls and other people from all over the Europe and coaching other people was very, um, very interesting. Forced myself to try to explain in a simple way very complex thoughts and I was forced to clarify in my mind these thoughts before telling to others, especially new, newcomers. And it, I improved a lot in, uh, from the point of view of coaching other people and I used some um, thing I learned that day also at, in, in my daily job with colleagues, with uh, newcomers, and other people that arrived. And then I continued coaching another workshop. Oh. Okay. After joining a sprint, I decided uh, in EuroPython to organize one. There was an open space to propose a sprint topic and decided to propose to work on the Django website. And this is a picture of the day. I proposed in the whiteboard the, the topic of working on the website of Django and a lot of people, uh, with my surprise, showing up. And was a lot of very great uh, developer from a lot of parts in Europe. And we worked together to replace the um, search function in the Django website, removing an external engine and using only Django itself. It was a very great way to coordinate the work. Uh, we have to do some, some experiments to set up the environment and to uh, see what was happening under the hood. And it was very, very good to uh, cooperate with people that was more skilled than me, but uh, I learned a lot from them. So the sprint is every time is a very good way to improve and at the same time contributing back to Python. So after that experience, we was able to only um, create a proof of concept of the technology, but in the next uh, months, I worked to actually propose to the Django web developer mailing list uh, a pull request to remove them. At the time we were using Elastic, but we already had in Django itself a search function so we was able to um, simplify our, uh, our stack in our website. And this is 
the search in Django uh, today after a lot of new pull requests I did from that day. We added multiple languages, we added a lot of uh, functionalities. For example, here we have the same page in, fr in French uh, with highlighting and with some web type searching with soft removal and so on. Doing all these things, I decided to create a blog because I was following a lot of people writing, uh, reading the article and to learn. And so I decided that I was uh, in the moment to write about what I was doing and I created my blog. It's not the best <laughs> blog you can find. I'm not a UI expert, but these things force myself to um, uh, also go far from my comfort zone or backend developer and be connected with the front end part, for example, and also to writing how to and article about technical stuff. Um, it was a way to improve a lot as, as a technical writer and then was able to also to contribute back in the Django documentation and in the documentation in the web, web services we developed at work. So uh, it was a very good opportunity to write more and crystallize ideas and to share then also these ideas. And that is what I did after writing code. I tried to sharing in social media and to receive feedback and uh, also news aggregator like Hacker News was uh, a jump <laughs> into the empty and uh, was I received a lot of comments uh, for some hour my new article went in trending and I received more criticism than appreciation but it was a very good way to understand what I was doing bad and in improving. If, if you're brave enough, you can, I suggest you to receive criticism from people because it's a very good and effective way to, to find your, uh, your error or your issue and it, you can improve a lot. And during all this, um, here I used a lot uh, some uh, websites before ChatGPT, I used Stack Overflow a lot. But at a certain moment I decided to don't use Stack Overflow for finding answer, but I was starting using Stack Overflow to search for question. Uh, it was a very good way to dip down in a subject, in a topic. For example, I, I wanted to learn more about uh, subquery with Django, and I, I used the tags to find the question without reading the answer from other people, because it usually was very old answer or not so correct answer, I forced myself to write down some solution. And every time I did that, I learned a lot of things because it's something you can find very easily, questions. You can find today in ChatGPT, you can find easily very a lot of uh, solution, but it's more difficult to find interesting question about the topic. And I used after that, I used a lot of my answer. I already did, I already gave on Stack Overflow on my daily job or in, in the Django contribution back. So um, it's a very, I think I suggest to you to improve. Another thing I did was um, caring about also my local community. I'm part of the Python Italia Association and we have also a group of Django Italian contributors. But at the time we don't have, um, translation for the documentation, like for Python documentation. So we decided to uh, st stay together and translate a, a certain amount of uh, words you need to be published on the Django website. Uh, was a very funny <laughs> moment uh, when we reached the amount and Claude was responsible for translation in Django, also Carton and Marius at the end merged uh, the, the translation and, and the experience um, teach me how to clarify some concept uh, I read every time in English, but I misunderstood. So translating my original languages clarified me a lot of concept and was a very great experience. I also a way to lower the barrier for newcomers in Italian that don't talk English. 
related to uh, languages, it's um, uh, something I, I tried to increase was my the diversity of the community. I tried to participate in, in international conferences, and my first one was abroad was in Copenhagen, DjangoCon Europe. And being part of this type of conference, far from your original um, country, it was a very effective way to appreciate diversity, uh, appreciate what people can bring to the community and the different way they contribute to the community. I learned a lot of new, new things and different way to see uh, what, how the community is, um, uh, is um, used and uh, appreciated. Uh, another thing I, I did at a certain point was getting inspired by the um, uh, people that before me uh, created this community, starting with Widow. And uh, uh, I came back to the origin to see what was their goal in creating Python and creating some project. And it clarified me a lot how the community works and what was uh, worth and why it was worth to being part of it. Of it. Uh, I read a lot of articles and, and books about uh, founder the community and inspired me to be more and more involved. So I decided to do the same. Um, there was a moment during pan the pandemic uh, with no conference in person, with uh, no connection with other people in person. And this is my first conference after the pandemic. I was in Berlin, in PyCon.de, and I met for after two years uh, friends from the Django community, Marcus and Mar, and we talked about ideas we had during this period of isolation and they suggest to me to share these ideas with other people because I had so few times to contribute in the code and a lot of ideas to do, things to do. And uh, I did it and with their suggestion, other people in the community uh, contributed to the code based, based on my idea and it was a way to inspire them to do something uh, they haven't thought about it. As I said, I've been part of the PACON uh, Italia conference. And uh, um, in 2019, I decided to join the team as an organizer. Uh, with uh, other, we traveled also in other conference to promote our conference. Here I'm in Berlin with Ernesto, uh, Valerio and Alessia, try to, to promote the, the conference. And uh, this is from the last conference, one hour before all the conference uh, started, trying to organize uh, with other volunteers. It's a very great uh, thing to do, um, being part of a conference, the organization. You can be connected with so many people. It, it is an incredible experience. And then I came back closer to home. I live in a small city, Pescara in Italy. There is no conferences and no meetup at all. And so I decided to bring there something I liked a lot, like the Django Girls workshop. So we organized for the first time a workshop. And it was a very effective way to show young people and especially girls that they can be part of the tech community. But also was a way to create a small group of Python uh, developers. And from that point, we started a new local community. Uh, we created the PyCon uh, Pescar Meetup. This is a picture of, from one year ago in, in a pub in Pescara. We uh, started with the PyBeer, uh, only chatting about Python and our passion, and we discovered that there was other people close to you that was using <laughs> Python, but you didn't, didn't know them, uh, so we created a uh, connection. And starting from that point, I started to iterate all over the things I already show you, because I started to organize talks, uh, organize moments to networking. I give a talk in my local community too. Uh, we organize some outdoor moment to be connected, and we reached some goal together because talking about Python all day here is it's not the best, so especially in the summer, you want to do something different. 
we cook together and we also join other community. We discovered there was other community, in this case was the DevFest from GDG local uh, meetup, and we organized a workshop inside about Python inside the fest. We also um, give a talk in the local university about Python, of course, and we organize dinner with other community to create a connection, and we continue to um, organizing beer and talk to only to be one month together with other people. If you are interested in this uh, community, maybe you are not living <laughs> in Pescara, but uh, you can find a lot of information what we do, and maybe you can try to reply in your local hometown, or you can join a local community if you live in a big city that already have a local, um, a local community like that. And other than that, I hope that you can be inspired from what I show you. It's only my experience, but um, Maybe it can start, be a starting point for you. There are many other things you can do to be a Python contributor. And I share the link of this, this um, slide at the end, and you can use it and you can share it because it presents it with Creative Commons. And uh, I want to thank my company, Plentitab. We do a lot of Python code. We do a lot of contribution to the um, this conference, we are sponsoring this conference and another conference, and we share a lot of uh, open source software. And to find out about my slides and my article and other things I, I say to you, you can also use my QR code, you already find my, my blog, uh, the, the slides and other information. So, thank you. Last thing before a question, a picture. <laughs> okay. You can say bye. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much, Paolo, for your talk. Are there any questions in the room? So a question about being a code contributor, like how were you like initially inspired to do it? And did you just went to the Django um, main repo and just said, oh, I can solve this problem and just solve it? Or did you have someone taught you mentoring on how you could contribute? Did you met someone from the maintain main maintainers of Django? Thank you. Yeah, as I said before, I was afraid at the beginning that I was not able to contribute back. So I waited a a lot of time before doing that. But then I found out in, during the sprints and with other tools or reading other articles from other developers that there was a, an issue tracker with some tags on it. And the starting point today I can suggest to you is going there, finding um, the tag for uh, issue for newcomers if you don't think you are able to solve more complex things or if you already have more, um, you know, expert in some part of the the code, like the ORM or templating, other pieces of the uh, the code base, you can filter this issue and find that if there is someone that's working on that, of is it interesting for you to work on that issue, and if there is no issue interesting for you, you can open new one and propose to work on that. And this is the, the starting point. But I will suggest you to try test yourself in already open the issue. We there we, there there is very simple one for people that want to start, and it's a, an effective way to start. Thank you for the talk. I wanted to ask, um, how do you manage uh, uh, your uh, open source uh, experience with your daily work? 
during uh, your uh, past years? Yeah, it helped me a lot during the daily job uh, being an um, open source contributor because I already known a lot of um, people from the framework and the packages I use every day. So sometimes um, I was able to tag people on social uh, I've been connected with to ask them for a solution or to talk about something I was experiencing during a daily job. And more than that, contributing to the code base of the framework I used to build projects uh, gave me um, a confidence far from the confidence you can find only using the tools. Because contributing back, you are forced to go down and see from in the test uh, and see what the, the code are doing at the lower level. Um, now I, I can say that I'm more afra uh, less afraid to use the tool because, because I know how many great engineers worked on that in the last 15 years. And they did a very great job. I learned also from the solution they did in the code, uh, the best practice they used and uh, how they tested the code and why they choose a partner instead of another. So um, it helped me <laughs> in many ways. Any more question? Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, my question is like, what advice you will give to someone who is looking to contribute in, into the core of Python, like Python core development? Sorry, can you repeat lower? Uh, like, lower. Uh, what advice you will give to someone who is looking to contribute into core Python development? Okay, in the Python core. Okay, uh, it's something I tried, <laughs> I failed, <laughs> but only because um, uh, I opened the issue, um, trying to solve something I found in the Django and Django codes, and was not a very um, interesting issue. And they examined my proposal and they voted against it. A lot of people was pro this change, uh, other were against. But um, also in that case, I learned how the triaging phase work in the Python core. I started cloning the CPython uh, repo and I learned how to contribute in the future. So wasn't, that was not a failure in the global sense, it was a, an improvement for me to understand how things work. And now I have more ideas, I understood that they can, they reply to you, they give you suggestions, and there is also a good explanation why they didn't want to merge that the proposal. So I think it's, it's the same as I said before for Django, you go in the issue tracker and find something interesting for you and try to contribute back. You can start also with documentation. And it's a way to learn how the uh, GitHub pull request work or other other um, services they use to to contribute in the code. I think this is time. So thank you again for your talk. Thank you.